Hi witches! So today we are going to be discussing the Celtic pantheon, the pantheon of gods worshipped by the Celtic people. Now before I get into everything that we are going to be talking about today, I want to make sure that you all know that there is a distinction amongst the Celtic peoples. So you do have like Gaelic, um, Celtic peoples, so um, like Irish, Scottish, that kind of area. You have the British Isles in general, I, I've seen that as a distinction, as well as the Gaulish um, and mainland European. So um, today I want to start by talking about the creation story that is, um, you know, central I think to a lot of pantheons and ancient cultures. So with the Celtic creation story, we don't really have one because each like realm I almost said, oh my gosh, like it's Game of Thrones or something, but each area had kind of a different uh, take on the story. So um, in one take, giants, right, or possibly an original god, um, breathed the universe into existence via a melody. So this, if anyone's a Lord of the Rings nerd, reminds me a lot of Eru Luvatar, who um, I think Tolkien really took a lot of inspiration from this, so it's pretty cool to see. Um, in France, they believed that where the land and sea met, so this is like Gaulish, um, where the land and sea met, there, you know, uh, if you think about the beach, there's like sea foam and stuff. And from that foam, a white mare named, so a female horse, a white mare named Aoka was born. And then she eventually gave birth to Kernanus and together they conceived the rest of the gods. So this idea of self-creation and then like breeding with your children is a thing that is seen across a lot of different cultures. It's not the first time we're gonna run into it. Um, it's kind of, you know, weird, but I, I think to us, we're kind of just like, uh. If you think about it in um, like, if you think about it in terms of Christianity, I mean, the son of God is Jesus and yes, he did, create Jesus with a human. So I guess maybe that's not quite what I mean, but as a personification of yourself. I, I'm just trying to say this isn't like necessarily the weirdest thing to have happened. A virgin birth is kind of strange too. So hopefully we can all keep an open mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, beyond that, there is also a story of the battle with sea giants and all humans were killed during this battle. But Epona, who is a horse goddess, um, saved a man and woman and they went on to create all humans. So it's kind of like that Adam and Eve story almost. Um, and then if you are looking at specifically the Irish uh, folklore, you have the Tuatha Dé Danann, which I, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm super sorry. Um, but basically you had the goddess Danu and the god Don. Um, Don was killed by Brienne. I'm sorry. Um, and his body became the earth and Danu, who was mourning the death of Dawn, her, she began to cry and the tears became the water. So a lot of these creation myths are very like beautiful and poetic, I think, um, and very like full of gorgeous imagery. But I really wanted to get into um, some of just like some of the more commonly worshiped gods and goddesses of this pantheon because I think that's really what people are the most interested in instead of uh, the creation myths. Okay, so I wanted to start off with like the most like iconic god, I guess, um, and that is Kernanus or the horned god. Now, this is originally a Gaelic deity, um, but it's kind of used as a term, um, like Kernanus is used as a term to describe any horned god from like Western Europe. Um, he was seen as the mediator of men and nature, um, the lord of the wild the god of wild places, you'll see that kind of description a lot. He appears as a man with antlers or sometimes as a man with a deer's head, which is how I see him. Um, and he is a god of fertility and life and like the wilderness and the leader of the wild hunt, which is um, a group of like spectral hunters that roam through the forests. Uh, depending again on the mythology or the uh, the uh, pan like um, regional folklore that you follow. Um, this is actually one of the gods that I work with. I've been working with him for a very long time. Um, when I was a youngin, <laughs> when I was really first starting my craft, the first experience I ever had learning about like different gods outside of like the Christian God was through a show called Robin of Sherwood. And um, I was introduced to this fiction, fictional and you know, in the show um, character called Hearn the Hunter. And I remember just having this overwhelming sense of like peace whenever I saw him on, on, the, um, on the screen. 
This is a really old show. If you guys um, have not heard of it, don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who has actually ever watched it. Um, but with that being said, I started after that point when I kind of recognized that there was something outside of like God, like with a capital G. Um, I, I really started working with him. I think honestly, I started working with him first because that, that kind of predates, I would say, like me knowing about Hearn predates me learning about Wicca. It doesn't predate it by like a lot, but it, it I mean, I think I, it was like, I don't know, I would say I, I really kind of became aware of him around like 10 years old and then started like actually reading about and practicing Wicca when I was like 13. So very young, I know. Um, I, like I said, feel him a lot when I'm out in nature, when there is just silence. I feel him in the stillness. I feel him when I am working with my plants. He is a god of, like I said, of fertility. So you will see him around a lot of festivals and holidays like Beltane um, and Ostara and definitely Letha, uh, which is the summer solstice. And um, yeah, to me, he is more of like the god. He has this sense of like um, virility and just like that pure masculine energy. So that's something that I really wanted to incorporate in my craft in a way that wasn't toxic, like the way I felt the Christian god was um, in my life personally. So yeah. Um, the next goddess I wanted to talk about is Brigid or Brigid or Bridget, depending on where you are talking, like where you're coming from, what you're talking about. Um, this is a goddess whose name means the exalted one. She is the goddess of spring, of life, fertility, and smithing, so like metal, metal working. Um, she's celebrated during Imolk, so if you guys want to learn more about that, you can check out my videos from February. Um, she's the protector of mothers and children. She is known to have inspired poets. So this is super important because if you think about this society, um, people really, it was, it was a, primarily an oral tradition. So we don't really have a whole lot of records of like traditions from like the ancient times um, up until like when medieval monks were starting to like um, really write down the stories and and um, like record everything. So it is a little bit skewed but, and that's the only information we really have but um, Brigid was really important to them by all accounts. Um, she is often seen as having fiery red hair and wearing a cloak of sunlight so you can really see how that um, ties in with Imolk. And she's sometimes seen as a triple goddess in that she's a maiden, a mother, and a crone. Some of her, her symbols include fire, the Bridget Cross, um, and she's a great, great goddess to work with if you are interested in uh, primarily hearth magic. The next goddess we're going to talk about is the Morrigan, and she is the goddess of death, destiny, and war. Um, I work with her as well in my craft. Um, she's also called the Phantom Queen and the Prophecy Teller. She gave prophecy, so uh, she, you know, told the future, um, and gave favor to heroes who pleased her, and this is primarily in a sexual manner, um, if you read the stories. And on the battlefield, she would actually personify herself as a murder of crows to take away the dead. So it's kind of, it reminds me a little bit of like the Valkyries, I believe from Norse mythology. It's very similar to that in my mind. Um, she is a shapeshifter, so she takes the form of many animals, but primarily like crows, ravens, um, a wolf. Sometimes she showed up as an eel. She is also seen sometimes as a triple goddess, like Bridget is, um, sometimes being three separate goddesses, sometimes showing herself as a maiden, a mother, or a crone, just depending on all of the legends. There are so many, she's splattered across all of those legends, like the Ulster cycle and the mythological cycle, mythological cycle as well. So I'll get to that in a second. But she's also very, very heavily associated with the Fae. Um, if you want to learn more about her, I re really recommend, like I said, the Ulster Cycle and the Catholic Mactorade. Um, I'm sorry again if I'm saying that wrong. I've seen different like pronunciations and I tried to listen to like actual Irish people saying it and I tried, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's been coming to me for not quite as long as Hearn, but more like evidently, I think she is very much when she's in your life, she's in it. Um, and she's been with me for a very long time. I credit her a lot to protecting me in an abusive household and teaching me to be strong and like not take shit from anybody. So I really, I owe a lot to the Morrigan and I'm very happy to be working with her in the capacity that I do. The next god we're gonna talk about is Lou. Um, he's often called Lou of the Long Arm. Um, he's a craftsman, a warrior, a trickster god. Um, he's the god of kings and justice. Um, he is celebrated on Lunasa, which is a holiday on the Wheel of the Year that we will be talking about in August. Um, his name means to bind by oath, so you can kind of see how that ties in with like kingliness. 
Um, he was the first chief alum, which reflects the skill of someone as a judge, a ruler, um, and a poet, which again is like very important and integral to like Celtic societies because their um, practices were passed on vocally. And he is very important um, around Lunasa. That holiday is celebrated to um, celebrate his victory over the spirits of Tir Nanook. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, again, there's a lot of resources that we can talk about in a second. The next god that I want to talk about is the Dagda. Um, he's the Celtic god of fertility, of agriculture, life and death, magic, druidry. Um, he kind of overlaps a little bit with Kernanus, but it's a different type of energy in my in my mind at least. But because he is really associated with like agriculture and fertility in that sense, um, he does wield this like cauldron called the Cauldron of Plenty from which life springs. Um, he also has the Club of Life and Death. Um, so it's kind of like the judge, jury, and executioner kind of thing, I think. Um, and he also has a harp that can control the will of men. He has many children and lovers, kind of like Zeus does in my mind. Um, so you can see like some parallels between that. And his, his name physically means the good god. Um, the Dagda is also a, the, he's also the father of Bridget. So the next goddess we're going to talk about is Caridwen, and she is the white witch, basically, in this whole pantheon and mythology. So sometimes she's not always seen as a goddess, but a sorceress, but I have seen her worked with as a goddess more often than not. So um, she's a Welsh sorceress with a magical cauldron from which she can brew, like, cures for anything. She is really heavily associated with like potion making, which is cool. Um, she's known as the goddess of creation and inspiration. Um, she is an aspect of the mother archetype and is also a wise woman. So it's a little bit of that crone archetype as well. She is blessed with the gift and able to give the gift of poetic wisdom or po yeah, poetic wisdom, prophecy and inspiration. So um, if you, again, like, I think you can kind of start to see like a little bit of a pattern. Um, she has a magical throne, which like points to her also being a goddess of sovereignty and of freedom, which is really cool. And I think very enticing when it comes to deity work, especially if you are coming from, I don't know, like a background of being like oppressed by religion or maybe not feeling quite comfortable in the religion that you were born into. Um, and she, she generally uses her gifts in an altruistic manner, um, but she really is the, embodiment of that mother and crone figure so she's very cool and reminds me a lot of stevie nicks um just saying <laughs> i've never seen the two of them in the same room at the same time um anyways the final the final goddess i wanted to talk about today is danu um which i mentioned earlier in the video but she is really the namesake of the tuatha de Danann. Um, she's the mother goddess from which all Irish gods come from. She is very, very mysterious. She really kind of reminds me of Gaia um, in that where she's kind of like revered, but also not known about as much. So she's kind of in the background. She doesn't really make an appearance in a lot of the stories unless they're just like, oh yeah, and Danu did this thing. She is the goddess of rivers, of sovereignty, of power, unity, nobility, etc. Um, and she's also tied to fairies and standing stones in Ireland. So very cool goddess. Um, there are, like I said, a lot of resources that you can read um, and they they date back to the medieval times. So they are still really old. Um, when you are reading about like, especially like Irish Celtic um, legends and stuff like that, just keep in mind that these are written by um, Irish monks who did want to like Christianize some of their, like the pagan, you know, um, stories. So to make it a little bit more, um, Christian seeming, I think. Um, and, and I think that was in, in the efforts to, um, kind of assimilate both cultures, if that makes any sense. And kind of like, some people say take out, like just eradicate the pagan, uh, belief system. I don't really know. I, that's kind of how it seems. And that's kind of the vibe I got, but just read everything with a grain of salt and know that you might kind of see it skewed perspective. There are, um, four different cycles like cycles of stories that you should read about and that um, from beginning to end are the mytho mythological cycle, the Ulster cycle, the Fenian cycle, and the historical cycle. So um, you can find a lot of these stories, especially stuff about like Cullen and things about the Morrigan. You can find tons of that stuff on um, like at your local library and um, I will try to link, I'm going to link a really good website that I used for, as a source for these videos, like this video and any video having to do with the gods and pantheons. 
Um, I will link my sources down below so you guys can read a little bit further and read about some gods I didn't mention in this video. So I hope this video was like approachable and makes deity work seem less scary and introduce you to some gods you may not have heard of before. Um, and yeah, we'd love to hear your opinion. If you guys work with Celtic gods like I do, I would love to connect with you and talk about your experience. But um, until tomorrow, I'll see you later. Bye.